Hello everyone, um, hope everyone is fine. Today we will uh, study Python. I will try to explain Python in a very simple way and I will try to make it very easy for you even if you don't like programming. So let's start. What is Python? So Python is a programming language, fine. What the, but what does this mean? Well, let's give an example. You, you are trying to communicate with an American Indian. You don't know the language, of course. So in this case, you will try maybe to find a translator. The translator speaks English, speaks French and Russian, Italian, Spanish, and also speaks the language of this guy, okay? Then you need to, I mean, unfortunately, maybe your language is something, I mean, Latin not included in this list here. In this case, you will try to learn any of these languages, English, French, Russian, Italian, Spanish. Then you will say what you want to, 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 you, you will tell this guy what you want to say to this guy and then he will translate it and then you are happy. Fine. How this is related to Python? Well, it's the same analog here. Computers speaks only zeros and ones, okay? And we don't speak zeros and ones. However, it's very hard to, to speak to the computer directly. There is a language called assembly where you can speak to the computer in, with, with zeros and ones, but this is very complicated. So we will use a translator, this guy in the middle, it's called interpreter or compiler, whatever. I mean, this will maybe, maybe will come later, but this guy can translate these languages to the computer, okay? So this means that you need to learn one of these languages to be able to talk to the computer. So talk to the computer here, meaning that asking the computer to run some instructions, asking the computer to, to um, uh, do them some calculations, to save them some data, uh, to have an interface for a game, all these things. Okay, fine. Then we will choose Python to start with because Python is really one of the easiest language and also have um, and also has a very good capabilities. Okay, um, I will just have a fictitious character here, FIFA is my cat, that I will, I will name Python interpreter as FIFA, so it's a bit easier to communicate. Okay, so FIFA will translate our code to the computer, so um, it's, it's, uh, t it will tell the computer the instructions, what we want the computer to do. Okay, so, in order to do this, FIFA is stored inside a program called Jupyter Notebook. Or so Jupyter Notebook has a Python interpreter, which we will use to um, run our code. So please install Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it's it's uh, really nice because it has a, it's a web based and it has interactive um, uh, mode, so you can run things and see the results right away in your uh, with application, so it doesn't matter Safari or uh, or Chrome, anything. Anyway, you will download it from here and install it. Once you install it and run it, you will see that it will directly open um, uh, a tab in your browser. And the tab will, will, will have this shape, something like this, okay? Okay, so uh, once you, you open the new tab, then you press the, the new button here and you will see that uh, there is an option for to do to open a Python uh, um, page and then you will be able to write code there. Okay, so at this point, I will switch to Jupyter Notebook and um, start doing some coding. So hopefully you can follow. Okay, so Here, our Jupyter Notebook. 
Okay, so as I mentioned, here you see new, and then you press Python to open a new page for you. It's called Untitled. You can rename it, I will say, first Python code. Just rename it to first Python code. Okay, so let's go back to FIFA. So FIFA is the translator that will translate what we want to say to the computer. So FIFA knows some keywords. She, she knows also the numbers, knows the, the, the letters, and also knows that any line start with bound, meaning that it's a comment, not for her. So she will not try to translate it to the computer. It will ignore it. That's why it has a different color, okay? But FIFA knows a very famous keyword called print. Of course, it makes sense that you think that print is printing something on the computer. So FIFA, once FIFA or the, or the Python interpreter sees print, it will try to print what it sees, what, what's in the parentheses here, okay? So we, we printed the first statement in our, in, in our Python code, which is hello FIFA, okay? But also FIFA knows numbers. So you can print numbers. So if I use say print one, it will print number one, okay? You can also print more than number, more, more than one number by, by separating them with commas, like this. Okay, then FIFA also knows strings or letters. However, if you want to, FIFA, if you want the interpreter or the FIFA to understand what is, uh, what, do, what you are writing is a letters, not a variable. We will get to variables later, but you have to put them in between quotation marks. So you say, um, this is my first class. Okay. So then you will print the, the same statement you put between the quotation marks. Remember that if you don't put the quotation mark, you will get error. So if I repeat this again here and remove this, first of all, you see that the color changed to black. Okay? And there are some colors with the red, but this is because FIFA knows these words and we'll get to them later, but not now. But anyway, they are black, meaning that they are not knowing by, by FIFA, so you get an error here. Okay, so also you can print floats. Floats meaning a number with um, floating points here. Okay, these are the variables. These are the types of variables that FIFA knows. One of the biggest advantage of, of any programming language or in, uh, with, with in FIFA in this case, that you, it can store values. So it, it can store values that she could use later. For example, if you get back to the analog of this American Indian guy, if you, if you tell the, inter, the translator that Okay, tell him the date. You want to tell this American Indian guy the date. Then the translator, okay, say, says, okay, I know the date. It's stored in my mind. Today is 12, for example. So I say, to, I will, you can store in the memory of FIVA a, a, a variable. And you do this by just doing this uh, equal sign. So I made a variable called today. And I assign the value of 12 to it. Okay, so I tell FIFA to print today. Okay, nice, it can print today. Then today is just a, 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 a place in the memory. And you stored in this place number 12. Okay, so 
let's say that second day you went to the um, the translator and told 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 him to inform this American Indian again about the date. So in this case, he will have to add one because this is the next day. So he will say something. Okay, today equal today plus one. So what does this mean? It says that the new value of today equal the old value plus one. And the old value we know here that it's 12. Okay, so what do we expect when we print today? So again, I print today again. So we expect it to be 13, right? Because you have 12. This is the old value. And because this is the next day, it will add plus one to it. Okay, what if you want to tell this American Indian guy about yesterday's date? So you will say, okay, today is equal to today minus one. And then you can print today again, and you'll see it became 12. Okay, nothing stops you from defining another variable called yesterday, and then you say that yesterday equal today minus one. And then you can print yesterday. Good. Now we want to make the print looks a bit better. So we can say that, okay, I want to say that yesterday is, and then comma, and I put the value, I mean, the, the va variable called yesterday. When you run this, you'll see yesterday is 11. So be careful. I mean, you can, you can have this written the same way as the variable. This is not a variable. Why this is not a variable? This is because of the quotation marks you see here. FIFA understand that these, this, mean, this means that whatever in between is just a string. It doesn't refer to anything in the memory. Okay? So then that's why it printed it as it is. Anything it will, between quotation marks, it will print it as it is. But for the variable, it printed it it printed it as the, the value of the variable. So what is in stored in, inside the variable? Okay, uh, now let's do a quick exercise. I want to store the value of a GPA of a student in one uh, variable for one year, and for the second year, I will store for another value, another uh, yeah, variable, so year one, the student got a GPA of 3.2. Year two, you got a GPA of 3.7. Now I want to store the average of these two numbers in, in one in another variable. I will call it average. Okay. So how we calculate the average? Luckily, if or any interpreter has a calculator inside, so you can do this. This should give you the average. So I, I want to print the average now. So again, to make the printer, the print statement looks nicer, say average equal then average okay so this also tells you that you can store floats you can store integer you also can store string so for example you can make variable called first name and then call it mark for example last name and I will call it I have to put the equal sign Twain okay. 
I will now want to print first name and also last name. Okay, if I run this, you get Mark Twain. Well, now for you to know, the plus sign would also work. So the plus sign will, will, will also work with um, strings. What it, what it will do in this case, it will put the two names together. So Mark Twain without space. If you want to add a space, you can do something like this. Okay, so I remember that if I will print anything between parentheses as it is, uh, between quotation mark as it is, okay, like this. So in this case, I added a uh, space. Okay, sometimes we change variables. For example, um, I had a variable here called today. Maybe later I want to 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 call it. I mean to make it to, to make today equal to the day of the week. So I will make it a string rather than an integer. So I will have something like Monday. And with the print statement, I will say today is then. Okay. The point I want to make here that you might get confused because you over overrided the variable already. It was an integer and you made it a string. Maybe at some point in the program you get confused. What is what is mon today now? Is it um, uh, an integer? It is. Uh, is it a string? Luckily, there is a keyword that um, Fever knows, which is which is called type which prints to you, prints the type for you so type of today so in this statement i'm saying please print the type of today variable and you see it's a string okay it's a string here okay so because print and type are um are um, keywords that stored or built in for FIFA or any Python interpreter, you cannot use them as a variables. Okay, so you cannot say something like type equal one. This is not possible. You can, do, you can change it, for example, to uppercase, and then it would work. See, when, when it's lowercase, it's, it's red. When it's uppercase, it's black. So red, this is something FIFA knows. Always remember this. Black, it, do, she, it doesn't know. Okay. Fine. And uh, to give you a, a maybe a list of um, keywords that you shouldn't be using, here are some of them. These built-in keywords that we will get exposed to them later, but these keywords you should be using. Okay, so something like false, true, and raise, def, none, true. Anyway, maybe it's it's hard to remember all the, all of them, but when when you write your code, if you see a word that is colored by red, then you try to not to um, you, you try not to call your variable with this um, name. Okay, so this is the first. I, I think we are we are done with the first video. Next time we'll get to do uh, conditions. Also, if we need to emphasize more on some of the issues with the variables, we'll do this on the way when we are um, when we need to do uh, when we need to do this. So see you and. Good